welcome back to another episode of Into the Word with me, Pastor Jonti and Rev Ness. Hey. And if you are new to Into the Word, uh, this is your weekly uh, bite-sized dose of Bible. Uh, mm. where we dive into a short piece of scripture um, and unpack what it might be saying for us and also for you, our listener. Um, mm. So what are we doing today, Ness? So we're going to have a look at John 20, 24 to 29. It's that classic passage about the guy that we rudely call Doubting Thomas. Yeah. One of the disciples. Imagine being it's like a Dodge. disciple and you're known as Doubting, Doubting Thomas. Thomas forever yeah, yeah, and a yeah, day. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So One time. <laughs> poor dude. Like, and come on, he hadn't seen Jesus yet. And yeah. oh, look at, he gets a rough, rough one. He gets but, better up. Right? Yeah. yeah. Will yeah. I read it? Yeah, get, hit us with the passage. Okay, so it goes like this. Now Thomas, one of the 12, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands, the marks of the nails, and place my fingers into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Now, eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. And put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Mm. That was a hard one, the last line. Imagine hearing that yeah. from Jesus. Yeah, I, and oh. I think there's some... Not lost in translation, but the way that that translates in English lends itself to a very... It seems harsh on Thomas, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's like, good on you for believing because yeah. you got to touch the wounds in my yeah. hands. But like... All those other ones, mate. Yeah, because also I think we... we the implication being that Thomas... He, he's talking to Thomas as if he is the only one that needed to see to believe. Right. He's the only one that didn't see the risen Christ, right. according to the beginning of this passage. Mm-hmm. So I think labelling Thomas as he needed evidence mm. to believe, so did all of the other disciples. Yeah, I think... <laughs> when the women came to tell them about the risen Christ, they didn't believe them. They yeah. had to go and see see him for themselves. Yeah, because it actually Christ appeared to ten of the disciples yeah. and gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit. So poor Thomas was just left out of that yeah. little cluster. Exactly. So yeah. it's really mean really, isn't it? <laughs> I, 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 I do guy. think he gets a bad rap. Yeah. So uh, some context around Thomas. Please. Because um, I... Often, like when I first encountered and, and started to think about this passage, like as a teenager, I mm. kind of just assumed that Thomas was this other dude, right? Because of the way that we kind of interpret that this passage about doubting Thomas is that he's just some extra guy that might have always been a bit of a doubter, hanger on. Um, or but actually, um, the, so it said in that passage that he's known as the twin. Other yes. than that, we know that he is he was paired with uh, Matthew, the tax collector, um, when Jesus sends them all out in pairs to heal and drive out demons, which we read in the 10th chapter of Matthew. Um, and he's also the sole disciple who seemed ready to sacrifice his life when Jesus wanted to go back into Judea to heal Lazarus, which is mm. in um, John chapter 11. So remember when mm. he decides to go back and heal Lazarus yeah. and almost all the other disciples are reminding him like, hey, remember the last time you went in there they tried to kill you and yeah. you're probably going to go get stoned if you go back. And Thomas is the only one that stands that up go and in. goes. Uh, and I think the quote in John 11, 16 is, well, let us also go then so that we might die with him. Whoa. So contrary to this popular image that we have of Thomas as this kind of flaky... Dodgy doubter. ...doesn't really, seems a bit wishy-washy, he was like the real deal when he it came there. to disciples Mm. he he was amongst it and he was willing to die for jesus Mm. Um, he was willing to go and get stoned um, Mm. as a result of going back to heal lazarus Um, it's good sermon material though having a doubting thomas mm. isn't it because we because who of us does not have moments of doubt in our life jaunty yeah right yeah to doubt is i think to be a normal thinking functioning intelligent person to Mm. have doubt. Mm. I actually think it's scary when you meet someone that doesn't have that innate Mm, mm. tendency to doubt. Mm. If you're you're that quick to just immediately accept everything as true. Yep. um, Yeah, you you need a healthy dose of scepticism and doubt, I think. Critical thinking. Yeah. I think it's important. God's given us this 
package of a great brain, mm. we need to flex it mm. and stretch it mm. and ask all the questions. And yes. I think also when I've experienced doubt in others in pastoral care, it's often when the person ha- has often been a Christian for a very long period of time and then they are confronted with some horrific thing in their life. Mm. Yeah. And um, one friend of mine lost a child, mm. a little child, and died in a car accident and their life was never to be the same again. And that person has had a complete um, issue with faith mm. and, yeah. and struggled with faith since that moment. Where are you, God? I have served you all these years and my, this child in my family would die mm. um, in a car accident. And so I, I think people would doubt and I can see why you would doubt in a moment like that. Mm. You know, an innocent is taken from us. Yeah. That mm. Just even hearing that story, it, the similarity between that person and with Thomas. Mm. Thomas had dedicated his life to this guy yeah. and all of a sudden, yeah. like we've been talking a lot about on, on Filthy Hope in the lead up to Easter recently, was like, can you like even begin to put yourself in the shoes of the, just these disciples who were so committed to following Jesus and then even though Jesus was warning them the whole way along, mm. he gets publicly humiliated, beaten and yeah. killed. Yeah. Like what does that do to your... Mm like any any faith that they had in Christ mm. as the Messiah to see him pinned up on a tree mm. and, and brutally murdered, mm. um, of course you're going to take a hit to, to any any faith that you have in in, in Christ as the Messiah. Um, and, and like we've said, Thomas hasn't encountered the risen Christ yet. No. Like the others have. So I think it's easy for us to go, yeah, Thomas, oh, he just, he Thomas. Really, just needed a bit more faith. Yeah. That's right. And like none of the others believed until they saw Jesus. It's a lazy sermon really to go that route. Mm. <laughs> I would agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. I like Thomas because he's, oh, he's, he's human, he's isn't great. he? Yeah. He's got um, – it, it just makes, I think, living and believing as a Christian, Thomas is just – he's got the gear Yeah. in my mind. Can you have doubt before you are a Christian? Do we call it – and we before we're – filled with faith and believing and understanding about Christ before salvation, do we call that doubt? Because I doubted that I just didn't believe. Mm. I don't know if I – and I doubted that it was truthful, this story of this Jesus palaver. Is that doubt or is that just – I think there's a line maybe between doubt and willfully just being like, nah, that's – that's crap. Mm. Um, I don't. I mean, I, I guess, yeah, it probably is doubt, but I think there's a distinction between the doubt like that that you're describing mm. and the doubt of your friend, right? Because mm. um, you've known, you've because, known. Yeah, you've known and all of a sudden something that you've been resting on yeah. as firm and as yeah. solid yeah. has crumbled and yeah. let you down. Yeah. Um, and there must have been a bucket of these followers who felt like this. Of course. Before Pentecost. Yeah. They must have all been in a, in a, oh, a desperation and sadness. They would have fleed from the situation of the crucifixion and mm. many wouldn't have, he didn't appear to all the people, yeah. all the followers, uh, of which there would have been many. Um, I think the Bible talks about hundreds that followed him on the road on Palm Sunday yeah. into Jerusalem, yeah. people that were loving his ministry and had probably seen his miracles, did that just turn to doubt because they didn't see him? Mm. I'm imagining it would have. Mm. And, and I don't think faith can exist without, without that doubt because mm. mm. otherwise it's just knowledge. Right. Faith by definition requires that leap yeah. into something that you're not quite sure of. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, the other uh, – I, I, I think this is a really clear example of Jesus answering the call from someone to show up and give them a sign. 
Um, I don't think this is a story of Jesus admonishing or um, uh, not punishing, but like uh, pointing out Thomas's lack of faith. I think mm. this is a story of Jesus actually acknowledging Thomas approaching with questions mm. and, and healthy skepticism and going, he, he, like, what do you think about this? He, he, here's, he, here's my response to you. Touch my hands. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. a really experiential knowing of who Jesus, the risen Christ, is. Mm. That it's just undeniably palpable because in the physical realm of what we know now, he could physically touch yeah. Christ's resurrected wounded hand and sign. The experience of that would have, I would imagine, galvanised the faith and the thinking and the ministry of Thomas mm. into yeah. that next phase. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Powerful stuff. Yeah. I love this passage and I love it. I mean, Thomas it? is such a great... Yeah, he's a cracker. Uh, yeah, character yeah. to read about. I like him a lot. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, if people have thoughts about this passage, about Doubting Thomas, uh, mm. please like get in touch. Let us know. All the details for that are down below. Um, any final thoughts on Thomas before we wrap this up? I think if anyone's got a doubting story, doubting faith story, has your faith been rocked mm. by something and you've had a return to faith after deep doubt, I'd, I'd love to hear that yeah, story. Yeah, send it in. Send it awesome. In. Yeah, absolutely. Again, details all down below. Yeah. Um, we will see you next time for another edition of Into the Word. Um, yeah, we hope you're enjoying these as much as we are. Yeah, it's um, fun. We'll see you on Tuesday for Filthy Hope. If not, right back here on Wednesday yeah. for more Into the Word. Have a good one.